Hello everyone. Very good morning. Am I audible? Yes. Good morning. You are audible. Yes. Okay. Great. So first of all, thank you so much for joining this session. Uh, so meanwhile, uh, the others are joining. So I just I just like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Zanu. And uh, overall experience, if I talk about, so I have uh, basically the 10.5 plus years of experience in this analytics and automation training. And I'm also certified in the RPA, that is basically in the uh, Blue Prism, Microsoft Power Platform, and also into the Python as well, in the robotics, that is RPA concept. So I'm certified in that. So we will just go for this session basically related to the Power BI. So I will start the Power BI from the scratch level where I'm just going to share with you all the things which we are just going to, you know, uh, use into the real scenario cases to develop the dashboards, to build the, build the dashboards as per the requirement, what are the functionalities and the features and how you are just going to install these uh, Power BI desktop and the Power BI services configuration. So each and everything we are just going to start from the basic itself. Okay. So uh, if you will have any doubts, so feel free to ask, feel free to unmute yourself and ask your query until you are not clear that, uh, on, that, on that particular topic or on that particular thing. Okay. So let me share my screen and let me know if that is visible to you. So screen is visible now? Yeah, your screen is visible. Okay, okay. So now let's understand the concept of this Power BI. Okay. So if I talk about this Power BI, so this is basically the business intelligence tool. Okay. This is business intelligence tool. Now, what is mean by the business intelligence? The main of this business intelligence is the tool through which you can get the better insights to make your business fruitful. Okay. So how you are just going to make the fruitful your business when you have the clear picture and you have the better insights on the basis of data sets that what exactly the things are running in your business currently. So Power BI has given you a tool, which is nothing that is a Power BI desktop and the Power BI services, which I'm just going to talk about in this session uh, itself. So they have just given you the tool that is basically the Power BI and they have just given you the feature where you can import the data, you can create your visualizations, you can get the better insights. They have given the lots of the features through which you can just go for to make your fruitful business. Okay. So the Power BI is basically the Microsoft product. Okay. Or you can say that that is a Microsoft tool. So in this Power BI, basically we have the multiple products, but in this case, as of now, I'm just going to discuss about the two products first. One is the Power BI desktop and second is that is Power BI services. Now let's understand the concept of this Power BI desktop first. So Power BI desktop is basically the window desktop application. It means you have to download this one and you have to install into your system. Okay. So Power BI is window based application that is or you can say window based desktop application okay where you can import the data from multiple sources okay from multiple sources and you can create your visualization or you can say the dashboard so now whenever you require to create the dashboard, so you have to use this Power BI desktop. So they have just given the features that you can import the data from multiple data sources. Multiple data sources means you can import the data from Excel, you can import the data from the JSON, you can import the data from the PDF, 
SQL Server, Safana, Oracle, the multiple data sources they have given. So where your data set is existing on the on that sources, so you can connect your Power BI desktop directly from that source and you can import the data into your Power BI desktop and you can create your visualizations. Okay. Now, once your visualization gets ready, okay, suppose you have created the visualization as per your business requirement or as per your client requirement. Now, that visualization you have to show to the people or you have to show to the management. So, what you are going to do? You are not going to share that particular file or Power BI desktop file which you have created, no. What you will do is you will deploy or you will publish that visualization onto the cloud, okay? So that is nothing, but that is basically the online services. So Power BI services come into the picture when visuals, or you can say the dashboard needs to deploy or you can say the publish and give the access to the users okay so now whenever you have created your visualization into this power bi desktop that visualization you have published on the power bi services now you must have the list with whom you want to share your dashboard you can share the dashboards with them as per the requirement. You can provide the access to them, whether that is a read-only read mode access or that is basically the member access or whatever the access you want to provide. So you can provide by using this Power BI services itself. Okay. Now, if I talk about this Power BI desktop, where I have uh, discussed one most important thing, which is the multiple sources, okay? So now let's understand how exactly this works. So now here, this is suppose, this is Power BI desktop, okay? This is Power BI desktop, which has given you the features, then you can import the data from the multiple data sources correct you can import the data from the multiple data sources now those data sources can be your excel file it can be your pdf it can be the access the sql server then it can be the snowflake etc any of the data sources so now you are just going to import the data from any of the data sources into your Power BI desktop application. Okay. Now, in this Power BI desktop application, basically you are just going to create the dashboard or you are just going to create the visualization as per your requirement. Okay. Now, once your data is imported and you have created this visualization, now this visuals needs to get deployed, correct? Now this visuals needs to get deployed or needs to get published, correct? Now, when it required to go for the publish, whenever you have to go for this publish, then that is nothing, but that is basically the cloud services. That cloud services is nothing but known as Power BI services. For this Power BI services, you do not need to go for any kind of a desktop installation. It is basically the URL, okay? So on the URL, you have to do the login. And once you will just log in, so you will be able to see all the dashboards and reports which you have published to that particular services. Now, always remember one most important thing the Power BI visuals only you can share within your organization. You cannot share the beyond the organization. What does it mean? For an example, suppose you are just working for, I said, suppose Cochex. Okay. So now the, suppose the domain is at the rate Cochex.com. 
okay this one this is the domain now through which you have logged in into the power bi desktop okay now what i have to do i have to create the visualization so i have logged in by using this my email id and at the rate projects.com which is nothing but the domain of the company or domain of the organization now if i just need to publish this dashboard then with the same domain or with the same account the power bi services must be logged in so for an example if you have logged in by using the xyz at the rate projects.com then with the same login credentials this power bi services also should get login okay always remember with the same account this also should get login otherwise you will not be able to publish on the same cloud services okay so power bi desktop and the power bi services must be logged in with the same user or with the same credentials okay now now suppose if i have published this power bi visuals into my power bi services and now this visuals i just need to share with the people or share with the group or with the share with the individual person so i can share my visuals only with those persons who belongs from the same domain name okay it means if i have logged in by using the domain name at the rate projects.com so i can share my visuals only with those persons who has the same login with by using the same domain that is at the rate projects.com i cannot share beyond this one suppose if with the other organization or with the other company if i just need to share this visualization i cannot share with them so this is something which you can you can go for this you can go for this within the same organization you cannot go for the beyond organization so in the interview they can ask you that is it possible that if i have created this i have just created my login credentials and i have logged into the power bi with this at the rate something.com and now if i just need to deploy into the another domain can i do that so the answer is no okay the second question might be for an example if in the same same login credentials i have just published this report now from the cloud can i share my visuals or can i share my reports on the other domain so the answer is no so it means within the same organization only you can share your report or you can uh, give the access to the user who has the same domain name okay so these things you must be remember on this one now in here anyone has any question no sir okay now suppose i have imported the data from the excel okay now let's see suppose i have data i have just imported the data from the excel now suppose if i have the data from the excel okay so here now here i have imported the data from the excel and i have just created the visualization so suppose the excel file name i am just giving for an example the store.xlsx now this excel file is placed on in your local system okay now you have created this visualization and you have published this one so whenever you are going to publish or whenever you are going to deploy the report okay deploy or you can say the publish both the keywords are same if somebody ask you what is the deploy and what is the publish so both are the same thing okay so when you are just going to publish the report or a dashboard into your power bi services then always remember that two things gets deployed one is your report and second is your data set now what is a report and what is a data set so report is nothing but report is your dashboard or you can say the visualization and data set if i talk about so data set is basically your source 
data. Source data means like this Excel itself. Okay. Now, now you have published this report. Okay. You have published this report where I'm able to see this report that is nothing but the dashboard. And here you can see that is a data set. For each and every single dashboard, the two things will get published. Okay, always remember that might be your interview question also. Whenever we are just going to publish or the deploy any dashboards, then what are the things are going to get published onto the cloud or into the Power BI services? Then there are two things. First thing is basically the report and second is data set. Report is nothing but your, but your dashboard visualization, which you have created by using this Power BI desktop. And second is your data set that is nothing but the source data, which you have used to create that particular visualization. Now, the things come into the picture. For an example, in this Excel file, suppose if I make any changes into the Excel file, which are existing into my local system. Okay, so if I make any of the changes into that, then directly it is going to get reflect into this Power BI services, which I have just deployed on this one. So the answer is no. Okay, so for an example, suppose if I have created this visualization and I have published this one. Now, once I have published this one and shared with others, now tomorrow, suppose if I make any changes into this store.xlsx Excel file, which are placed into my local system, then suppose if I update any record or if I delete any record or if I add any record, if any kind of activity I get performed into this Excel file. So on the basis of that is my published dashboard is going to get impact or not. So the answer is no. Okay. So you have two things for this one. What are the two things? The first thing is that you, if you have made any kind of a changes into your store.xlsx file, then open that dashboard into your Power BI desktop. Okay. So for an example, suppose the dashboard you have created that is a summary dashboard. Okay. And the Power BI file extension is .pbix. Okay. This is the extension of the Power BI, X, Power BI file. So now by using this store.xlsx, you have created a dashboard and the file name is summary dashboard.pbix. Now, this PBIX, which you have just published, so that is nothing but known as a report into this Power BI services. Okay. Now, so here, what you have done, you have made any kind of a changes into your store.xlsx file. So if you want to go for that changes and you want to reflect those changes into Power BI services, then you have a two choices. What are the two choices? The first choice is that open your summary dot dashboard summary dashboard dot pbix file and the, there you will get the option as a refresh so once you will click on this refresh so after the refresh the changes are going to get reflect into this summary dashboard dot pbix not on the cloud remember on this summary dashboard pbix in this you are going to see the changes Okay, then again, you have to publish this same dashboard. You have to publish this same dashboard onto the Power BI services again. So it means if I make the 10 time changes into this store.xlx file, then the 10 time I just need to refresh this summary dashboard.pbix and the same 10 times I just need to publish on this Power BI services. Okay, so whenever you are just going to publish again and again. So if with the same name, if the dashboard is existing into my Power BI services, then it is going to give you the pop-up that with the same name, already the report is existing. Do you want to replace this one? So if you click on a yes, so this report is going to get overwrite this one. Okay. Otherwise you can rename this one and you, you can republish this one. But 
now suppose now suppose if this is store dot xlsx file is updating every time okay if your dependency is on the other person suppose this is store dot xlsx file is updating by someone else by using that data set you have created that visualization okay now so what do you have to do every time you have to refresh then every time you have to publish correct so every time you have to perform this activity okay so if you do not want to perform these kind of a repetition then the second things come into the picture what is the second thing the second thing is nothing but known as a gateway okay that is nothing but that is known as a gateway now what is a gateway so gateway is basically a medium which is going to get a create a connection between your power bi services and your data set okay so if i talk about this gateway this is the most important concept we will also see the real cases on this one so gateway gateway is bridge between power bi services and data source okay so this is basically the bridge between the power bi services and the data source so what will happen so now for an example suppose if i have installed the gateway and i have connected my gateway with this particular that data source whatever the data source i have used so i can directly refresh from the cloud itself every time i do not need to open this summary dashboard dot pbix and refresh again and publish again that activity i do not need to perform again and again okay so in that case the gateway comes into the picture and on the real scenario we always work on the gateway concept but you must be aware from these two things that there you have the two ways which i have explained so the either in the two ways you can use any of the ways but the best way is nothing but known as a gateway and in the interview <clears throat> the gateway question they are going to ask you definitely okay so if somebody ask you what is a gateway so you can say the gateway is basically the bridge or you can say the gateway is basically the connector between the power bi services and your data source okay so once you are just going to confirm your login your credentials towards your data source so every time it is you know uh, you can refresh your data set or you can refresh your reports from the power bi services or from the cloud itself okay so every time you do not need to go into your original pbix file and again you have to publish this one so these activity you do not need to perform again and again now once you have published the report into the power bi services then from here from this power bi services now the report can be accessed so if you will share the report now suppose you have shared the dashboard or suppose if you had shared the reports with someone now they can access these reports they can see your visualization and now they can understand what kind of a visualization you have created so they can go for this one now if you have shared the dashboard so these dashboard they can access from the web they can access from the browser browser means i'm just talking about the desktop only okay so they can or you can say the laptop or desktop they can access this one now the second thing they can access from the mobile itself okay they can also access it from the mobile itself because the things or the uh, once you are just going to share the dashboard with any of the user so that is going to generate a link and that link you can open into any of the browser and that is basically the login credentials they are just going to put over there 
and they will be able to see your dashboard okay so this is basically the concept that how we are just going to create any kind of a dashboard and how we are just going to publish or a deploy to them and how they are just going to see our visualizations on this one okay so this is basically the concept of this power bi desktop and power bi services any doubt anyone uh, sir ek bar ye bataiye sir gateway kis tarike se refresh karta hai data ko okay to jab hum gateway ki baat karte hain to gateway mein kya hota hai ki basically in this power bi services we have to install this gateway तो गेटवे किस तरीके से काम करता है गेटवे एक ब्रिज की तरह काम करता है जैसे अगर फॉर एन एग्जांपल मैं इन लेमन लैंग्वेज अगर मैं गेटवे बात करूं तो जैसे आप ऑनलाइन पेमेंट करते हो करेक्ट ऑनलाइन पेमेंट के लिए आप बेसिकली क्या करते हो एक गेटवे ही तो यूज करते हो जैसे अगर मैं बात करता हूँ कि आप गूगल पे यूज कर रहे हो तो वो जो गूगल पे है आप जब किसी को पेमेंट करते हो तो वो पेमेंट आपके बैंक से ट्रांसफर होती है करेक्ट राइट right? अब आप जो लॉगिन करते हो अपने फोन में वो आप डायरेक्टली अपना बैंक अकाउंट तो आपने लॉगिन नहीं किया आपने क्या लॉगिन किया आपने गूगल पे अकाउंट लॉगिन किया राइट right? वो गूगल पे अकाउंट आपका किससे कनेक्टेड है आपकी बैंक से कनेक्टेड है तो आपकी बैंक और आपके बीच में जो एक ब्रिज इस्टेब्लिश कर रहा है पेमेंट का वो आपका क्या है वो एक गेट जनरेट करता है तो पहले जो आपकी पेमेंट जाती है वो गेट के पास जाती है और गेट से फिर वो पास होती है आपकी बैंक अकाउंट की तरफ एंड देन इट गोज इनटू टू फाइनल पेमेंट ठीक है ओके सो गेट पे बेसिकली एक मीडियम होता है बिटवीन द टू थिंग्स दो लोगों के बीच में एक मीडियम होता है गेटवे जो उन दोनों चीजों को आपस में वैलिडेट कराता है और वैलिडेट कराने के बाद जो चीज या जो एक्टिविटी आपको परफॉर्म करनी होती वो एक्टिविटी वो पास कर देता है ये सर पावर बी आई सर्विसेज के अंदर इंस्टॉल होता है पावर बी आई सर्विसेज के अंदर इंस्टॉल होता है करेक्ट सो वी विल सी कि किस तरीके से इंस्टॉल करते हैं किस तरीके से हम लॉग इन क्रेडेंशियल अप्रूव करते हैं वो सारी चीजें हम लोग आगे चल के भी देखेंगे तो सर एक क्वेश्चन है yes. सर वो डेटा जब गेटवे तक आ मतलब आ चुका होता है उसके बाद कोई भी चेंजेस अगर मैं डेटा में करता हूँ तो वो फिर वापस से मुझे रिफ्रेश करने का जरूरत नहीं पड़ता क्योंकि नो गेटवे गेटवे से ही वो रिफ्लेक्ट होता है करेक्ट क्योंकि अगर मैंने यहाँ से गेटवे से इसको कनेक्ट कर दिया देन देर इज आल्सो द ऑप्शन इनटू टू दावर बी आई सर्विसेज जहां पर हम रेफ्रेश कर सकते हैं आपको रेफ्रेश का जो ऑप्शन है वो आपको पावर बी आई में भी दिखेगा एंड द सेम थिंग यू विल बी एबल टू सी इन टू योर पावर बी आई सर्विसेज ऑल्सो ये आपको रेफ्रेश यहाँ पे दिखेगा बट ये जो आपका रेफ्रेश होता है जो आपका PBIX फाइल के लिए ये जो आपका रेफ्रेश है ये रेफ्रेश डायरेक्टली कनेक्ट होता है आपके सोर्स डेटा से जैसे अगर मैं समरी डैशबोर्ड जो PBIX फाइल है इसमें अगर मैं रेफ्रेश करूंगा तो ये मेरा जो रेफ्रेश होगा ये डायरेक्टली मेरा कनेक्ट है किससे स्टोर डॉट एक्सएल से और ये डायरेक्टली मेरा यहाँ से रेफ्रेश होगा बट okay. जो आप पावर बी आई सर्विसेज में रेफ्रेश की बात कर रहे हो दिस रेफ्रेश इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन योर गेट वे ओके इफ यू हैव नॉट इंस्टॉल योर गेट वे इफ यू हैव नॉट कॉन्फिगर्ड द क्रेडेंशियल देन दिस रेफ्रेश इज नॉट गोइंग टू वर्क इट इज गोइंग टू शो द एर दैट द गेट वे इज नॉट इंस्टॉल सो यू आर नॉट एबल टू रेफ्रेश योर रिपोर्ट और यू आर नॉट एबल टू रेफ्रेश योर डेटा सेट तो सिंपल हम ये वर्ड्स कह सकते हैं अगर हमारा सर गेट पे नहीं है तो हमें बार बार पब्लिश करना रिपोर्ट्स को सिंपल सा रीजन ये हमारा ड्रॉबैक ही रहेगा करेक्ट और अगर गेट पे रहेगा तो हमें पब्लिश बार बार रिपोर्ट्स को नहीं पढ़ना पड़ेगा ये ऑटोमेटिकली रिफ्रेश होती रहेगी रिपोर्ट करेक्ट करेक्ट वही जो मैंने आपको फर्स्ट पे बताया जो आपने पहले बोला दैट वॉज द फर्स्ट पे जो मैंने एक्सप्लेन किया और आपने जो सेकेंड बोला दैट इज द सेकेंड पे और ये सर जैसे हम रिपोर्ट्स को अपनी लैपटॉप या यूजर को शेयर कर रहे हैं तो उनके पास डेस्कटॉप पावर बी डेस्कटॉप होना चाहिए नहीं नहीं उनके पास पावर बी डेस्कटॉप नहीं होना चाहिए दैट्स दैट्स द थिंग आई हैव टोल्ड यू कि जब आप यहाँ से शेयर करते हो सो दिस जनरेट अ लिंक एंड दैट लिंक डायरेक्टली गेट्स ओपन ऑन द वेब पेज दैट इज अब यू आर एल तो वो डायरेक्टली उनको वेब पर दिखेगा सो दे डू नॉट नीड टू गेट इंस्टॉल दिस पावर बी आई डेस्कटॉप Directly, they can see your report 
by using that login credentials or by opening that link which is generated while the time of the share the dashboard okay is it clear yes sir okay और जब आप यहाँ पर ये गेट में जब रेफ्रेश करते हो सो फ्रॉम दिस रेफ्रेश योर डेटा सेट गेट रेफ्रेश फर्स्ट एंड देन योर रिपोर्ट ऑटोमेटिकली गेट रेफ्रेश बिकॉज व्हाई द रीजन इज दिस डेटा सेट दिस रिपोर्ट इज कंप्लीटली डिपेंड ऑन विच वन इन दिस डेटा सेट ओनली यस और नो राइट सो वंस योर डेटा सेट इज गोइंग टू रेफ्रेश योर रिपोर्ट इज गोइंग टू रेफ्रेश ओके सो हेयर दैट्स वाई आई सेट it will ask you the login credentials for your source data set it is not going to show the login credentials for your dashboard always remember in the interview they might be ask you this question to get you confused that whenever we are just going to refresh so in the gateway what you are able to see you are able to see the report or you are able to see the data set so in gateway you are data going set. to see the data set only data set. okay so once you make this data set credentials activate and once you confirm that gateway credentials then once you will get the refresh so your data set is going to refresh and on the basis of that your report is going to refresh automatically okay is it clear everyone yes sir okay now let me save this one Uh, Anup, man, yes. uh, just one question. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, uh, if uh, the location or the path for stored or Excel is X file has been changed, mm -hmm. I made the changes in the mm -hmm. afterwards. Okay, so, so might be a foolish question, but uh, this gateway uh, refreshing gateway would help. No, I guess. No, no. So, uh, okay. So basically, your question is for an example. If this is store dot xlsx file which is existing into a particular folder, and tomorrow if the path gets changed, so will it work or will it not work? This is your question, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So that is not going to work because in the gateway you are able to see that path which is basically showing the existing or current path of that particular file. So once you will change the path of that particular file. then it is not going to get work because this refresh is directly connected with your entire path so if you are going to change the path of your file so it is not going to get work so so that's why in this kind of a scenario we always suggest that if you create any kind of a visualization then instead of your local desktop or instead of your local drive just use a common drive or you can use the server also okay so that server path is not going to get changed or that common drive path is not going to change right so in that case basically it will automatically will connect with this one now one interesting thing you you have asked very good question so the interesting thing for an example suppose if i have given you the requirement that i have provided you this store.xlsx file that this is a file and i have given you the requirement that you have to create the visualization for me and this 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 is my requirement okay so what you will do you will save this excel file into your local system you will create the visualization correct by connecting with this store.xlsx file which is placed or which is downloaded into your local system correct mm -hmm. now if you have created the visualization as per my requirement and now if i ask you please share the pbix file with me remember i said pbix file with me do not share this one just share this pbix file with me and the source data file with me also and i will look into this one and i will publish on the power bi services and i will give the access to the user you are not responsible for that only you are the developer so you have to develop that dashboard or develop that report for me so now suppose in this case this is store.xlsx file is placed on my drive summary dashboard is also i have now if i will share with you so in that case if i will make this refresh that summary dashboard 
So will it work or will it not work? It, 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 no, sir. Okay, so that will not work. Why? The reason is because this summary dashboard is containing the path of your local system. Correct? Your, your system. So in that case, what you have to do is whenever you are publishing this report, okay, or sorry, when you are just sharing this report, that PBIX file with anyone. So in that case, you have to ask to the user that you have to change the source path into your PBIX file with your local system or whatever the file place you have. So from you have to replace the path with your local system path. Okay, so you have to tell to them. So we will also see that how we change the path of your existing file, how to change the path of that particular file. Okay. That also can be case for an example, if store.xlsx, which you have used today, it is existing into your C drive. And now tomorrow, this file you have moved into the D drive. So how you are going to change the path of that existing file. Okay, so we will also see in this case that how you are going to change the path of your existing file into this Power BI report. Is it clear, everyone? Yeah. Any doubt, anyone? No, sir. Okay. Great. Now, so this is basically this Power BI journey. Okay. Now we are going to see that what exactly this uh, Power BI journey. If I talk about, so let me show you. Okay, because this is a most important concept that how this Power BI has come into the picture. Okay, so this is nothing but known as the Power BI journey. Okay. So if I talk about this Power BI journey, so this Power BI journey has contains basically the four phases. So what are the four phases? Now, the first phase, if I talk about, let me, okay. So the first phase, if I talk about, so the first phase is nothing but known as a power query. If you guys has used so earlier, basically they have just given this power query kind of add-ins into the Excel itself, where you can just use this power query functionality, right? Now in this power query, what are the features they have given? So that was completely related to your data set, right? In this data, what you can do? You can query your data, you can combine your data, then you can transform your data, you can remove or you can add any data or you can update this data. So now they have just given this Power Query add-ins into the Excel itself where related to the data you can perform any kind of these operations you can query the data or if you want to combine the data from the multiple data sets you can just go for this one correct now after this power query they have created one more add-ins what was that another add-ins so that another add-ins was nothing but that was known as a power pivot that was power pivot so in this power pivot what they kind what kind of a functionality they have just given so they have given the functionality that you can link the tables you can calculate the things if you want to perform any kind of a calculation so you can calculate the things then you can also go for the filters options okay you can set up the filters or any kind of a AI concepts if you want to use so that kind of a functionality, the little bit functionality, not the complete functionality. So they have just given to you. Okay. So this was completely related with the analyze concept. Okay. So now in this power query, they have given you the functionality or a features, which is completely related to the data concept, but in power pivot, they have given the functionality, which is completely based on your analysis or your analyzed concept now but by using this power query and using this power yes 
So by using this power. So sorry for disturbance. What is what is power query? So why are you using power query? Okay. So earlier, what they have given, they have given you the add-ins. Okay. So this is the add-ins. Remember, the things which I am just talking about. This is the add-ins. So in this Excel, they have just given the add-ins that you can install these add-ins, and by using this power query. they have given you the concept that suppose if you have a multiple excel file okay and in the multiple excel file suppose i just want to compile suppose if you have a file for the year 2017 year 2018 year 2019 suppose the three files you have together and after that you have to compile this after that you have to create the some kind of a report so now in this power query they have given you the concept of this combine so what you can do from the for, for the multiple files you can combine into a single file okay so basically related to the data set when you have the heavy data set then you can just go for this power query concept which is going to help you to handle the enormous or a huge data set easily and you can perform any kind of operations into this excel file which is nothing that is a power query which you have generated this one if you want to add any record if you want to update any record so basically this was completely used when you have a huge data set or you have a enormous data set okay. now okay. then okay is it clear now yeah it's clear thank you okay now after that they have created one more add ins that is a power pivot but this power pivot come into the picture when you have to perform any kind of a analysis things okay when you have to perform any kind of a calculations or you want to perform any kind of a filtration so these kind of a things or this kind of a add ins you can use okay always remember power query and power pivot was basically the add ins okay that was not the desktop application this was not related with any software or something this was basically you you will get the kind of add ins which you have to uh, add into your excel application okay now after that they have created the next level and what is the next level let's see now the next level is now that is a power bi okay now now that is a power bi so now in power bi what they have given so the feature of your power query the feature of your power pivot if you merge together that come into your power bi okay so it means all the things which we have into our power query and into the power pivot when we have a two separate add ins so these two has combined together and has generated the power bi concept although the more features has been added into your power bi applications also but these two things has been added into your power bi so here what you can do you can create the visualization okay so this is nothing but related to your visualization so in this visualization what you can do the visualization it means you can create the charts you can create the tables etc any kind of a visualization you can create and you can interact with multiple data sources right this is the most important concept interactions with data sources then you can go for the more drill level drill means basically you can go for the hierarchy level you can go for the better insights to understand the data okay so we will also see this drilling concept you can go for the explanations explanations is basically the dynamic statement or the dynamic uh, summary if you want to generate so that is nothing but is known as a explanations okay so which explanations is nothing but when you are just going to generate the dynamic summary it means for an example if i make a filter on a data set then the dynamic summary should get generated for an example if i select the year 2012 then the statement gets generated that in year 2012 this was a profit this was a sales something like this one and when i 
change the filter on the ear, then on the basis of that, that explanations or that somebody should get change. Okay. So this is nothing, but that is known as a explanations concept. And now after this power BI, the last thing here come into the picture, which is known as a share. Share is nothing, but if I talk about, so that is the power BI on power bi services you can say or power bi online you can say okay so if somebody asks you this power bi online or if somebody asks you this power bi services so both are basically the same thing now in this what kind of features you are going to get so basically this contains the feature which is related with the share concept so in this share what you can do you can share the reports share the report now, if you are going to share the reports, then you can open into the web or you can open into the mobile application also, right? And here you can go for the integration concept. If you want to go for the AI concept, that is an artificial intelligence concept, then you can also go for this one, okay? This AI concept, we will also see into this Power BI, which is interesting feature into this Power BI desktop, which they have just given then that you can use this power bi using that ai concept that is an artificial intelligence concept you can also use and you can create your visualization so they have given the multiple uh, things into this ai concept we will see into the upcoming sessions as well so now this is the overall journey that is the overall journey which is related with your power bi concept so this is basically the power bi journeys any doubt or any query into this power care journey? No, sir. Okay. So let me also save this file, which I will just share with you. So this is Power BI chat. Now, after this Power BI journey, now let's understand the building block concept. Okay. In interview, they will definitely ask you what are the Power BI building blocks. Power BI building blocks. Okay. So, what is the mean by this Power BI building blocks? Uh, anything or any idea which you are just getting by using by this keyword? Power BI building blocks. How the Power BI is made about means. Okay, good. Then. Anyone else? Okay, look now. If you break this keyword, building is it the uh, algorithm on which Power BI is based? Okay, quite close. Okay, look. So if you separate these two keywords, one is a building, and second is basically the block. Okay, good. Now if i say what is a building and what is a block so building look if you go for the small small things which are used to create the building okay like for an example if you if you just want to create a building so what are the things is required the labor is required okay the normal building i'm just talking about so the bricks are required the cements are required right so the multiple things which are required to create that building. That is nothing but the small things are known as a blocks. Okay. So now here it says Power BI building blocks. Power BI building blocks means if in this Power BI, if I just want to use the functionality and the features, then what are the blocks we have? What are the things what we do into this Power BI? What are the things which we can use to create this power bi concept okay so in this power bi there are the five building blocks now let's see what are five building blocks the first one is known as visualization okay the second thing if i say so that is known as a data set the third thing is known as a report the fourth thing is known as a dashboard dashboard 
and the fifth thing or last thing you can say that is nothing but known as a tiles so these are five building blocks which we have into our power bi so if somebody asks you that how many building blocks do we have in the power bi so basically we have a five building blocks into this power bi one is visualization second is data set third is report fourth is dashboard and the fifth one is tiles now let's see what is a visualization okay so if i talk about this visualization so visualization is nothing but known as a data representation okay so data representation it can be in form of pie chart that is pie chart it can be column chart it can be bar chart it can be table or etc any kind of a visuals or a visualization which you use so that is nothing but known as a visualization concept the data set if i talk about so the data set is basically the collection of a fields and record okay so it is collection of fields and records which use to create the visualization visualization this one okay so data set is basically the collection so like for an example if you have a excel data set okay so that is that excel file contains a fields and the record field is nothing but the headers and records is basically the individual entries so for an example if you have a excel file and which contains the header like the date then the country and the sales amount suppose these three columns so these three columns that is the date country and sales amount these are nothing but known as a fields now the individual records what is the individual records like for an example in the date i have filled the two days date then in in the country suppose i have filled the india and in the sales amount i have filled the 2000 so this is nothing but this is completely known as a individual record so individual line item is known as a individual records so data set is basically the collection of the fields and records which we use to create our visualization now third is a report okay third is a report now what is the mean by report so if i say the report so report is basically the collection of the different visualization collection of different visualization okay for an example if you have a data set okay on the basis of data set you are going to create the different kind of a visualization for an example from the one visualization you have created the year wise report year wise sales report second you can create the region wise report third one you can create the customer wise report so what you are doing you are using the same data set and by using the data set you are creating the different kind of a visualization so that visualizations are nothing, nothing but known as basically the report. Okay, let me show the, let me make the example, uh, example here. Like for an example, I say the sales wise report, the year wise report, then the customer wise report. Okay, so, so these are nothing, but these are basically the known as a dash reports now what is the dashboard any idea or anyone can explain what is the dashboard any idea whatever you are thinking uh it's a uh, kind of a preview of the reports uh in a glance where mm -hmm. we can uh, which is interactive and in a way we can uh, generate uh, different uh, kind of results which we want to view from our perspective correct correct so basically if i say so the power bi dashboard is a single page interface okay 
it's a single page interface which basically tells to the user that what exactly your report says okay and uh, what is the most important things into the report so this is nothing but the dashboard so look if i talk about this report so the report is basically the individual pages or individual type but if i say the dashboard so dashboard is basically the summarization of multiple reports on a single page okay like suppose if you have created the multiple page one page you have created which is basically nothing but known as for the sales report the second thing you have created the year report third one you have created the customer report okay now all these reports if i just want to combine together and i on the single page interface so that is nothing but that is known as the dashboard concept now the last one is basically the types so in this power bi if i say tile is a single visualization okay tile is basically the single visualization which found in a report in a report or on a dashboard it means like for an example if you have created one pie chart okay suppose if you have created this is suppose the pie chart you have created okay pie chart now suppose the second visualization you have created something like this okay i'm just renaming this one now suppose the second visualizations you have created the column chart okay. now so this is nothing but this is known as a tiles so one tile you have used this is the power this is the pie chart and the second tile you have used uses this column chart so these are nothing but these are known as a individual tiles so these are nothing but known as a power bi building blocks concept okay now here in this report okay let's understand one more important thing if i talk about this report so in this report there are two kind of a report one is the simple report and second is the complex report sorry not the report data set so here basically simple data set and the complex data set okay so if somebody asks you that what how many kinds of a data set uh, we can consider or how many kinds of a data set basically we use so it might be the two kind of a data set one is the simple data set and the another is basically the complex data set now let's understand this concept that what is what is a simple data set and what is a complex data set so simple data set if i say suppose i have given you the excel file and all the data for creating the visualization into that single file only you have to import you have to drag and drop the fields you have to create the visualization that's it it means where we are working on single file to create the dashboard or create the visualization but now suppose if i have given you my requirement but for fulfilling that requirement it might be that you have to use the sql server you have you have to import the some data from the sql server you have to import the sum data from the excel file you have to import the sum data from the another data source now you have three different data sources from where you have to import the data into power bi desktop then combining that or using that and concept that is a power bi concepts you have to create the visualization so it means you are importing the data from the three different data sources you are creating a query then you are creating the visualization okay so this is nothing but known as a complex data set so what is a complex data set where we are working on multiple data sets 
or you can see the tables to create the visuals okay let me write the example as well for an example i said the sql server and excel and snowflake etc okay suppose i have just given you the example like from these three data sources you are importing the data and you are creating the visualization okay and for this simple data set let me write the example suppose normal only the excel file simple okay so in the data set we have a two kind of a data set one is basically the simple data set and another is a complex data set okay is it clear everyone in real time you are using simple data set or complex data set in real time okay projects so basically it's depend on the requirement okay if we can never predict that every time we are using the simple data set or we are using this complex data set as per my experience i have used the both of this data set okay the simple data set i have also used the complex data set i have also used so you can never predict or you can never uh, assume that every time i am going to use the simple data set or a complex data set it's depend on the project to project or a project requirement you can say okay okay now suppose if i say that i have a portal or i have suppose this uh, uh, sql server or if i have a basically one excel file which we export from the one software and after that you have to create the visualization so that is nothing but simple data set right but now i said you have to create a visualization now by using that visualization my sum of the data set is on the sql server some data set which we have into the excel file some of the data set which we have the on the snowflake so in that case you have to connect with all these three different sources then you have to import the data and you have to create the visualization as per your requirement so this is nothing but the complex data set okay thank you okay so before we move further anyone has any doubt till the time whatever we have covered because these are the basic things so i'm just asking so because these are the basic things these uh, things you must be aware because from the basic things most of the time in the interview they can ask you the question okay so is it clear everyone right sir uh, power query is uh, related with sql no 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 the sql is basically the structured query language which helps in to retrieving the data or manipulating the data on the sql server only but the power query if i'm talking about so power query is basically the query which helps you to connect your data set into the excel itself only or in manipulations of the data in import uh, while the time of the importing the data if you want to create any kind of a query in the data or uh, in the kind of a data cleansing concept then you can use that uh, power query but power query is not related to your sql query both are the separate thing okay sir let me save this file also this is power pi building now you have to install this power pi okay so how you are going to install this power bi let me show you so simple you have to go on the google and simple write download power bi desktop okay so this power bi desktop is basically the open source you can install this one you can use for the lifetime okay there is no restrictions or there is no trial version this is a 14 days trial version or 18 days trial version or a one month trial version it's not like that okay so this power bi desktop basically you can install and you can use it for the lifetime so what you have to do is simply you have to go on the google and simple write the download power bi desktop and just click on this first link so once you will click on this first link 
it will come into this page and now if you scroll it down so now here you are able to see all the products which are related to your power bi so simply you have to go for this microsoft power bi desktop and here you are able to see this download once you will click on this download so it will ask you open microsoft store so once you will click on this open microsoft store so now the microsoft store is going to get open this might take a few minutes to get it open and now as in my system i have already installed the power bi desktop application so i will not be able to get this download option here because i can directly get open this one but if in your system if that is not installed so you will be able to get the option as an installation and simply you have to install this one so now you can see what option i am getting i am getting this open why because i have already installed this power bi desktop application but if you have not installed so you will be get the option for the launch or for the download option you will get it so simply you have to click on that download or the launch option which you are just getting and after that it will download one exe file okay so one exe file it will get download and simple you have to download you have to install that exe file simple just click on the next 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 nothing else you have to do okay so simply on click on the next 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 you will get the installation of that power bi desktop application so once power bi desktop application will get installed after that once you will search here so you will be able to see this power bi desktop application okay so simple you have to click and you have to open this one before we, uh, yeah yeah please. is there is there any uh, issue with 64 bit or 32 bit yes yes i was just coming on that point so for the power bi desktop this one this supports only the 64 bit so for this power bi desktop the system first thing the system should be 64 bit okay this one system should be 64 bit now the second thing login with domain credentials what is mean by the domain credentials the domain credentials is basically yeah it supports the windows 7 also yes okay now here basically the domain credentials is if i'm just talking about the domain credentials is basically it does not support remember it does not support the gmail out gmail then the outlook or the hotmail or the yahoo these kind of a credentials it will not support okay so you have to log in the power bi desktop with your official credentials or if any kind of credentials which you have apart from all these apart from the gmail apart from the yahoo hotmail apart from this one if you have any kind of a credentials apart from this one then by using that you can go for this login activity okay and always remember one thing once we will just go for this power bi services okay so you have to log in the power bi services with the same login credentials which you have used while the time of this power bi desktop okay so for an example if the power bi i have just gone through for an example i say the xyz at the rate coachx.com okay yeah windows 7 and 64 bit correct Windows 7 64 bit. Now it says the suppose if I have logged in by using this this credentials, okay, XYZ at the rate coachx.com. Using this one, these credentials, I have logged in my Power BI desktop. So whenever we are just going to get published, then we will use the same credentials. Okay, we will also use the same credentials when we will just go for this power bi services so always remember the credentials must be the same okay because you cannot publish the report by using the different domains and you can also not share the reports on the different domains 
okay within the same domain you can share the report and the same login credentials must be using this power bi desktop and this power bi services okay so always remember the power bi desktop is completely your open source you can use this lifetime but the power bi services if i say so this is the basically the 16 days trial version okay so after the 60 days it will get expired so you do not need to install or you do not need to go for this power bi services as of now once we will install the power bi services station then on the same day just go for this power bi services login activity the reason is that if you will go for this power bi services login activity from today only then from today your 60 days is going to get start okay so it is uh, it will be great if you will ins if you will just go for this login activity for the power bi services then we will start this power bi services session so from the same day you are going to get the 60 days trial version and you can avail the feature for the rest of the days okay so that will be the beneficial for you the power bi services uh, needs to be downloaded separately no when, no when I... no okay. power bi services this is completely the cloud based application cloud-based application or this is SaaS. So the cloud-based application, if I say, so directly it will open on the browser. You do not need to install any separate application. Only the Power BI desktop you have to download and you have to install. The Power BI services you do not need to install. On the Power BI services, only we, we will go with this same login credentials. And once with, we will just go with the same login credentials, then automatically it will open on the web page where you will be able to see all the Power BI services related feature or the report or the dashboard, each and everything you will be able to see on this Power BI itself, Power BI services itself. So this is completely the cloud-based application which open on the browser. You do not need to install any kind of applications or a separate application for this one. No, it's not like that. Is it clear, everyone? Sir, Can you please explain uh, about Power BI desktop. Like he said, like uh, uh, Gmail, Yahoo mails, it is not, it will not work, right? So who will give credentials? He said uh, login with domain credentials. Uh -huh. So, so suppose, uh, so suppose for an example, if you are working in your organization, so you must have your official email ID, right? So okay, by yes, using yes. that, you can use this Power BI desktop. You can log in with that. Any practice scenario, so. I will give to my credentials only. I will give to my Gmail credentials only. No, Gmail, you cannot use it over here. That's what I said. If you want to go for this login credentials, then you have to perform this login credentials activity with these kind of a domains. Apart from the Gmail, apart from the Hotmail, apart from the Yahoo, these normal or uh, these normal, basically the credentials you cannot use. You have to use one of your officials or something like this one, these credentials. That is mean apart from those ones. Okay. This one. Yes. Sir, uh, then how will we avail the official domain credentials? Because uh, some of us who are not working with any kind of firm, mm -hmm. then how will we get that official uh, credential? Will Cochex provide it? Uh, I, I will speak with the Cochex and uh, that I just need to check. So, or you can directly check with them. So if they just create the account or if you get it. So for this one, basically we just need to discuss on this one. So I cannot make any kind of a commitment as of now on this point. Okay. So basically suppose for example, if you do not have this credential, so you can create your visualization, okay? You can create your visualization, you can import the data, each and every functionality you can do. But when I will come into this Power BI services, when I will come for the, uh, basically the importing the visual. So in that case, you will not be able to perform if you have not the uh, 
correct domain credentials if you have not logged in so you will not be able to perform this activity then so in that case anyhow you have to log in through this one somebody has asked so i have to make a no 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 you do not need to make a new gmail id because gmail id will not support this one okay it means as i said if you want to go for this power bi desktop then if you want to log in with this one then you cannot use remember you cannot use the gmail you cannot use the hotmail you cannot use the yahoo as well okay so these public related domains which is which we generally use okay so these kind of a domains you cannot use you can use your official domains something like this one or a company email id or something like this one apart from those apart from those means apart from the gmail apart from the yahoo apart from the hotmail apart from all these if any kind of uh, domains if you have so through which you can just go for this login activity is it clear guys everyone yes sir okay now let me show you the interface so now once you will install this power bi desktop and once you will open this power bi desktop so this is basically the interface so now let's understand this interface first so here you can see this is the power bi desktop and in this power bi desktop the default page is the page one so the page is nothing you can compare with your excel file like in your excel you have the multiple worksheets or multiple tabs right so that individual tabs are known as the page into this power bi desktop yeah company mail id will work so now here individual page is nothing but individual worksheets you can go for this one now on the top you can see the home page then the insert these are nothing but these are known as a ribbon which contains the different kind of a features or the functionality into this power bi desktop okay now in the left hand side you can see the three different things one is the report second is your data and third is your model so now let's understand what is a report what is a data set and what is a model okay so now the report section is basically the section or the area where you are able to see the visualization which you have created into this canvas this white area this white area which i have highlighted this area is known as a canvas okay so this area is known as a canvas so now in this canvas we are just going to create our visualization which we will be able to see once you are into this report section now in this data section if i say once you will click on this data section so you will be able to see the data set which you have imported into power bi desktop so those data sets you will be able to see it over here once you will import this one Okay. Oh. Okay. So uh, for the pressure, basically somebody has asked the question that what for the pressure, what we have to do. So for this one, basically uh, with the Cojex, uh, you just need to discuss. Okay. Or after the session, I will also discuss with them and then uh, I will let you know or they will let you know directly on this point. Okay. Now in this data set, in this data section, basically you will be able to see all the data sets which you have imported into power bi desktop so in the right hand side you can see the fields so as of now i have not imported any kind of a data set so now you can see here i am not able to see any kind of a data set right it says you have not loaded any data yet so once you will load the data set so you will be able to see it over here and now if you will select that data set so in this gray out area you will be able to see your fields and your records okay now for example if i have imported the data from the excel i have imported the data from the sql so once here i will select the excel file so i will be able to see 
that Excel data set. Once you will go for the SQL, then you will be able to see the SQL data set. Now the third is model, which is a most important concept. So model basically we use when we have imported the two or more than two data sets. And if we want to create the relationship between the two or more than two data sets, then this model section come into the picture. Okay. So we will see into our real scenario cases. And this is one of the most important thing. And most of the time you are going to perform this operation if you are importing the data or if you are creating your visualization with a complex data set where you are importing the data from the multiple data sources and you are creating the visualization then definitely this model is going to come into the picture okay so we have these three sections the report section where you are going to see the visualization you are going to create the visualization if you want to see your data set which you have imported then you have to go into your data section and this is a model this model is related with if you have imported the data sources from the multiple data sources if you have imported then if you want to create the link or if you want to create the relation between two or more than two data sources then this model come into the picture now here you can see this is the get data if you hover the cursor here if you hover the cursor here now you can see connect to data from multiple sources okay some of the sources here you are able to see the excel workbook data hub sql server enter data but if you click on this get data drop down so you can see the cds cds is nothing but the common data sources so these are basically the data connectors which are going to help you to connect with your data sets okay so now you can see you can connect with excel file you can connect with power bi data set sql server text csv file that is nothing but the notepad or a csv file you can go for the web page also the blank query or data feed so from here you can go for this one now here you can see the more once you click on a more so it is going to open the wizard which is nothing but the get data wizard so let it open and in this get data wizard you will be able to see all the connectors through which we can connect our data sources and we can import this one so let it open then i will show you okay now you can see so here you can see this get data so now if I select this all, so here you can see the list of all the connectors through which I can connect my data set. You can see these are many options. Okay, you can see this one. Now, all these data connectors, they have also categorized in the terms of the different categories. So if you select the file, so you will be able to see the file connectors from where you can connect your power bi desktop so suppose if you want to connect with the excel file so here you are able to see the excel workbook if you want to connect with the notepad or a csv file you can see the text or csv suppose if your data is on the sharepoint list okay or on the sharepoint folder so you can see the sharepoint folder also and now you can see the folder also now suppose if there is a folder okay there is a folder which contains the files and from that folder you have to compile the data and you have to create the visualization then we can go for this folder activity if you go into this database so now you can see the database like if i want to connect with my power bi desktop with the ms access database you can see the access database on there if i want to go for the sql server database you can see the sql server database also the SAP HANA database, you can see the SAP HANA also, right? So there are a different connectors you can see. And here you can see the Snowflake also, right? In one of the, my recent projects, basically I have used this Snowflake concept. So this Snowflake is basically the uh, cloud-based application where you are going to get the URL, you are going to get the login credentials and you have to uh, put that login credentials. And once you'll just go for you will be able to see all the tables, each and everything which is existing onto Snowflake. 
just select this one then import the data so basically if you want to import the data so on the basis of the different uh, connectors operations you have to perform that activity like for in excel if i talk about so in the excel it is going to give you the browse option where you are going to select your excel file but if you go for this sql server or if you go for this snowflake once you are going to connect with them so they are going to ask you the login credentials which the company is going to provide you or your client is going to provide you the login credentials you enter that login credentials and after that the data is going to get connect whatever you are going to import with the respective table okay. now here you can see the power platform also uh, with them you can connect then the azure services if in your company or your client is using this azure sql database you can go for this concept as well in the online services you will be also be able to see like the uh, suppose if the list is created on the sharepoint and from the sharepoint if you want to connect with you can see the sharepoint or if your company is using the dynamics uh, nav so you can go for this dynamics nav also okay so or uh, google analytics if somebody is using the google analytics so they can also perform this google analytics so the recent projects which i have discussed with you where i have used the snowflake there i have also used the google analytics so that was basically the complex data set some data i was getting from the snowflake some data i was getting from the google analytics then i have to perform the operations between the google analytics and the uh, snowflake data set then i have to create the visualizations so these that was basically the complex data set and in this some of the projects also i have used the sql server also and excel file also so these are basically depend on your project to projects okay so you cannot uh, you cannot say that every time you are going to use the simple data set or every time you are going to use the complex data set so no it's not like that okay so it's depend on your project to project now here you can see uh, the other options so basically which is apart from the file database or the online services you are able to see it over here so here if you are if you want to import the data by using the python script you can go for this python script concept if your table is on the web page so from the web if you want to go for the web application so you can go for this web suppose if your data is existing on the browser so you will be able to see this web from where you can connect directly from the web page and you can import the data so all these operations we will see this one so this is nothing but the get data concept get data is nothing but import the data into the power bi desktop or these are basically the different connectors which are going to help you to connect your power bi desktop with the respective data sets uh, anup i have a question over yes. here yes uh, don't we have aws option to connect like the azure like the azure right yeah yes we have let me show you Because in database I can see Amazon Red, Redshift, but mm -hmm. uh, I cannot find a storage like S3 or CloudFront or something. Okay, let me open that. Yeah. Okay. So here you can see in the Azure, you can see Data Explorer you talked about, right? Yeah. No, I talk about AWS. Azure a database, right? No, no, AWS. AWS uh, you are talking about okay yeah yeah Amazon yeah so here you can see Amazon Redshift Amazon Open Search Amazon Athena these are the three things okay so limited options are there yes. yeah okay and here if you just want to go for for an example uh, suppose if you have a data set and like you said for the AWS okay so what you can do is you can also go for the O data feed concept. So they have just given. Let me scroll it down. So can you see this blank query option? This one. Okay. Yeah. So you can write your query from the scratch, and you can connect with the databases. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Now this mid section, as I said, this is nothing but known as a canvas, and in this canvas, you will be able to see your visualizations, which you will create this one. then in the right hand side you can see the filters option so this filter is basically used when we have to put any kind of a filter 
into our visualizations which we have created into this canvas area then we are going to drag and drop the fields into this filter section then now this is the visualization so this is the visualization which we are going to use while the time of creating the visualizations using our data set like for an example from our data set if you want to create any pie chart so we will select this pie chart if you want to go for the donut you can select this donut chart or a table chart or a slicer map any kind of a visualizations if you want to go for so you will be able to see the visualization here itself but power bi has given you the more options that apart from these visuals if you want to use any other kind of a visualization which we will see later on so they have also given the functionality that yes you can import the other visuals also and you can create your visualization so the lot of the things they have just provided to you which you can use while the time of creating your reports or while the time of creating your visualization and in this visualization section all the create creation of the visualization all the format related of that particular visualization all this functionality come into this visualization section now you can see format your report page so any kind of a any kind of a uh, basically the things if you want to go for the formatting related uh, related to your visualization then you will be able to see this format concept okay now in the right hand side you will be able to see the fields the fields is nothing but basically the data set which we are just going to import so that data set we are just going to see it over here okay so now you can see you have not loaded any data click on get data so once you will click on get data so same result you are just going to get it which we have gone through this get data concept now here you can see the different pages also the insert modeling view and help and so on and so forth so every ribbons or every menu bar has a different kind of a features or a functionalities which is related to your visualizations or on the basis of requirement you can use this one okay. now in the file you are able to see if you want to open the new file you can click on this new option if you want to open any existing report for example if you have saved any kind of a dashboard and if you want to open this one you can click on this browse okay once you will click on a browse so it will give you the browse window and you can import that visualization also okay. now here you can see if you want to if you have make any kind of a changes into existing file and if you want to go for the save you can click on a save or normally you can use the control s control s normally you use for the save if you want to create a copy of this one which you use the save as so here you, once you will click on a save as then you can create the copy of this existing power bi desktop file okay now you have import and you have export so once you will click on a import so you will be able to see this option whether you want to import any power bi template or power bi visuals from a file power bi visuals from a file it means if any custom visuals is existing into your folder so you can go for this one same import and here you can see the export this is the most important thing export now suppose if i just want to export this one the pages which i have created these pages i just want to convert into the pdf so what i can do is here i can just go for this export and i can click on this pdf so what will happen it will give me the option whether the current page you want to go for the export as a pdf for all the pages so it's up to you if you want to go for all the pages so all the pages are going to convert into your pdf pages so all the visuals you will be able to see into your pdf file as a pdf content okay. then we have the options and uh, settings okay so regarding this we will discuss this later on this is nothing but the options and if you want to go for this power bi setting concept if you want to make any kind of a setting setup backend so you will be able to see this one okay so this is something we will discuss time to time okay. now this is basically the get started so this is nothing but to show your screen so now you can see if you want to 
show the uh, home page basically uh, this is screen so you can go for this screen also okay whenever you will open this power bi desktop so this things you will be able to see if you want to close this you can close it from here itself okay. now and here you can see as i have logged in uh, through the login credentials so you can see whatever the name i have just given while the time of creating that login credentials you can see this one also okay. so this is basically the uh, the things of this power bi so these are the basic things or a basic concept and here you can rename the page also so here you can see like the page one if i want to rename if you double click on this one now this is into the edit mode and you can rename any of the name like i say the summary dashboard or any kind of a name you want to give you can give this name like the summary dashboard or any of things like this okay now if you do the right click on this one so you will be able to see the duplicate page rename page delete page and the hide page also okay regarding this hide page i will discuss with you later on if i click on hide page so it is not going to get hide it from here but here you will be able to see this one icon over here you can see this is i icon okay so it means whenever we are going to publish this report then this summary dashboard is not going to get published this page 2 and page 3 is going to get published okay so now this hide page activity basically for an example if you have created the multiple pages and any of the page which is basically your support page okay which is basically your support page which is connected with any other pages so for example if in this page 3 if i have created some kind of a visualization which i am calling out into my summary dashboard but while the time of publishing this page 3 i do not want to show this support page i do not want to show so in this case what i will do this page 3 i am going to make this hide page and once i will just publish my report so i will be able to see the summary dashboard and page 2 but this support page that is a page 3 i will not be able to see on this power bi services or client will not be able to see on the power bi services okay so then this hide page come into the picture if you want to delete the page so suppose page 3 i want to delete so here you can see the cross icon from here you can also go for the delete page or if you do the right click you will also be able to see the delete page once you click on delete now you can see it will ask the confirmation do you want to delete this page and this will be deleted permanently you can not roll back or you can not recover by using this control z or undo option you will not be able to recover if you click on this delete it is going to delete the permanently so once you click on this delete page 3 has been deleted so if you do the control z or undo so it is not going to get it back now if you do the right click you are able to see the duplicate page option okay this one so if suppose the summary dashboards you have created the some kind of a formatting everything you have done and now the same kind of a formatting or a replicate of this summary dashboard you want to create you can do the right click and you can click on a duplicate page now the duplicate page is now created you can rename this one if you want to rename this one and you can use this visualization also okay now one if, most important point i just want to show you okay this is a tricky question which can be asked so this question was asked uh, to me as well so now for an example here i have a multiple sheets and i am able to see these four options duplicate page rename page delete page and hide page now what will happen if suppose if i have a one page only then on the right click the same four options will i get so if i do the right click now you can see i can see the duplicate page and i can see the rename page i cannot see the delete and the hide page okay so it means if in your power bi desktop if desktop file if you have a single page so you cannot hide that page and you cannot delete that page because if they have given you the feature of deleting this page then if any of the page is not existing into this power bi file then this is no longer will be known as a power bi desktop file because the power bi desktop file basically contains at least a single page if 
this file will not have a single page then it is not good it is it will not be called as a power bi text profile the entity is going to end simple so that's why they have not given you this delete option second the hide option they have not given you the reason is that once this page will get hide and there will be no page to show into this power bi desktop file so this will also be no, no longer with the power bi workbook file okay so these two options has removed when you have a single page or single tab but if you have suppose one more page now i have a two page now i will get the option if i do the right click now you can see these two options are enabled i can just go for the delete page i can go for the hide page okay is it clear everyone and the same concept is in your excel workbook file okay in excel file you cannot hide all the tabs you cannot delete all the files all the uh, tabs or all the worksheets is it clear everyone any doubt anup i have one question mm -hmm. uh, let's say two pages which are uh, having references mm -hmm. and i deleted or hidden one one uh, one of it mm -hmm. now suppose is there in uh, mm -hmm. is there any way to recover the data i referenced in one of the page no no for example okay. suppose if this page is basically i have created as a support one and this page is i have created as a support two okay now in this summary dashboard suppose here i have taken i have used the visualization which i have created into into the support one and here i have taken the support two. now suppose yeah. once you will delete this support two it will ask for the confirmation you have deleted this one you will yes. not be able to recover so in this case in this place where you have used the support two so in this visualization the error will generate error will occur yeah. with the tile option will be there which shows the error yes tile option will be there but it will show the error okay got it okay so in this case always remember if you do not want to show while the time of publishing so you can just go for this hide option so this is the better option okay now so this is basically the concept else what you can do you can close this file and simply go for the don't save so whatever the last save mode you had into that particular file so that is going to remain the same when you will open this file yeah good yeah anyone else has any doubt till the time what we have covered <coughs> any doubt into power bi concepts or in the in the terms of the installation okay now let's see how we are just going to import the data okay so we will see how we are just going to import the data so now here you can see it says the excel workbook you can go it from here you can also go it from here excel workbook or once you will click on the more you will also be able to see this excel workbook concept okay now they have also added here the basically the common um, the data sources which we use so here they have also given from here you can also go for it so all the there are different ways but the things are same for uh, importing the data from any of this activity so if i click on excel workbook now it is asking me from where you want to import the data so now you can see i have selected this excel file this one now click on open so once you will click on open so now you can see it is creating or it is establishing the rate the connection between your excel file and your power bi desktop okay so now you can see here you are able to see this navigator okay so in this navigator you can see it is showing the power bi data dot xlsx okay so let me show you okay so now you can see this data i have imported okay now in this power bi in this power bi desktop the data which i have imported so the file name is what it says power bi data dot xlsx right so this is my file name 
and now in this square bracket it has shown as a 3 what this number represent this number represent the number of the worksheets which you have so the date the file excel file that is a power bi data.xlsx basically i have a three different tabs one tab is order tab second tab is people tab the third tab is return tab so let me open that excel file also so you can go for this so i'm opening this power bi data also so you will be able to see these three different data tabs okay now let me open this one it is opening the data set okay so now you can see you have three different data sets okay orders returns and people correct we have three different data sheets and those data sheets you are able to see the orders people and returns now so this number which is written into a square bracket that is the three so this number represent the number of worksheets count which you have into that particular excel file okay now if i if i just want to see what kind of a data do we have into orders so if i select this orders now you will be able to see that this data we have into this order tab okay this preview it is going to show you okay this is not the complete data you can see the data in this preview has been truncated due to the size limit so it is going to show you the few of the records from this tabs that what kind of a data this tab contains okay this one if i select this people tab now you are able to see this people data set if i select this return you are able to see the returns data set okay so now you can see in so one question yes yes please. uh sir if there is any discrepancy in the data set uh, how are we going to cleanse the data uh, after uh, importing it to the power bi or before importing okay the clean the data cleansing concept you are talking about correct okay so now for yes, yeah so basically in this power bi they have given you the feature and the functionality is that you can go for the data cleansing concept by using the power bi desktop functionality and the features okay so now for an example suppose if i am getting the data from this order step where i have one column which is the order id and this order id contains as a ca basically uh, this one the two digit of this alphabets or you can say the country name then hyphen then the year then hyphen then the sales okay now i said i want to create the visualization where i want to see the country by sales so what you have to do you have to split the data of this order id using this hyphen yes or no correct correct with as a text to column activity right yes sir yes so, so this is not necessary that you have to perform into the excel then you have to import no i can import this data and later on i can go for the split column activities using into the power bi desktop only I can split this order ID. So they have given this feature and the functionalities that you can go for the data cleansing concept after importing your raw data into Power BI desktop also. Okay. Now, if you select, okay. is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you have selected the data set, now you will be able to see the data only. Okay. Now you can see at the bottom, you are able to see the two buttons which are disabled as of now which is load and the second is transform data so what is the difference between the load and the transform data the load data means suppose if the data set which you are importing and you are sure that the data which are i am just going to import that data is completely refined that com data is completely pure and simply i just need to create the visualization by using the drag and drop i do not need to go for any any data cleansing concept then simply i can go for this load concept okay the transform data come into the picture when you have a data set which is not refined 
you have to go for the data cleansing concept as i have given you the example for the text to column activities so in that case i can go for this transform data but it doesn't mean that after loading the data you can not go for the data cleansing concept no after loading the data you can also go for the data cleansing concept but the power bi has given you the feature and the functionality is that if you think or if you have the idea that this data contains the some kind of a values which i just need to go for the data cleansing concept so while the time of importing directly you can go for the data cleansing concept and for the data cleansing concept we have to go for this transform data activity okay but after loading the data we can also go for the data cleansing concept okay but they have given you this view that while the time of importing the data if you think so that i have to refine the data i have to use the data cleansing concept then i can directly go for the transform data activities is it clear everyone so in uh, in transform data option uh, it will automatically convert the uh, given discrepancies or we have to uh, you know model the data after you know uh, uh, clicking that option transform data okay so once you will, okay so support. once you okay so once you will open this once you will click on this transform data so it is going to open the new window where you will be able to see the all the features and the functionalities which you can use to refine your data set okay for an example it might be the data which you are importing in this activity i have to perform the text to column activity correct second it also can be the data which you are importing that data can be can contain the sum of the blank rows which you have to delete correct okay right or like here if i show you this returns like in this case if i am importing the data then these headers are not containing as a header these are now containing as a record can you see on the top column 1 column 2 yes. column 3 is generating so now these first row i just want to convert as my header correct so these are also the cleansing concept right okay. so the cleansing concept can contain the different kind of operations and different kind of activities as per your data set and that that kind of a things they have just given you all the features and functionalities into your transform data set okay so once you will go for this transform data set so they have given you all the feature and functionalities so if i want to achieve achieve this one where i just want to convert my first row as a header or i just want to go for the text to column activity or i just want to replace anything with the other things also each and everything which comes into your mind related with the data cleansing concept every kind of a things you will be able to see into your transform data window only okay, okay. so from there as per your requirement or as per your business requirement you can select the date you can select the functionalities and the feature and you can perform this operation but uh, which is the best practice to Uh, you know model and clean the data before importing or uh, if uh, you know after importing which is a good practice uh, now look okay suppose i am just going to give you this scenario okay now suppose for an example if i have given you the data set which is basically on the sql suppose this data is coming from the sql okay now if you want to go for this order id okay if you want to go for this order id the text to column activities will you be able to perform the text to column into your sql server uh no right so in this case you have to use the transform data okay the second thing suppose okay. this data i have imported from the excel file okay now the this data i am extracting or i am exporting from one of the software okay simple i paste the downloaded file into that particular folder or the old data i replace with this new data set correct so every time you have to go for the text to column activities into your raw data then you have to upload the data then only it is going to take the current data yes or no yes so these manual operations you have to perform manually which might be the time consuming also correct okay 
but now suppose if i have created the query into this power bi itself that every time you will get the data from the order id in this format and after that you have to split the data so every time when i whenever i will reference this data set it will import the original data and at the back end it will perform the text to column operations itself and whatever the required data you have created so that kind of a visualizations you will be able to see so it means you do not need to perform any kind of a manual activities or operations while the time of data cleansing concept okay so every data cleansing concept is going to generate a query at the back end okay? okay which will automatically will get performed on your raw data if you have imported the raw data and once you will just click on the refresh each and everything at the back end is going to get performed you do not need to perform any kind of a manual operations or manual activities into your raw data set that means they can uh, detect that uh, where the operation needs to be performed yes yes it will automatically will detect correct okay, uh, anup uh, let's say for an example uh, considering this transformation like a transform data store mm -hmm. Uh, the whatever uh, operations are there i just uh, want to uh, consider an example where the raw data one of the sheet has a field or you know the column name as names only mm. and uh, i want to uh, transform that into two, three different columns like you know uh, i want to split that names into first name middle name and last name correct that happens in transform data yes yes so now in okay. order order id you can see mm -hmm. like the ca is your first name then mm -hmm. here is your middle name and this okay. sales amount is your last name okay and now mm -hmm. this is i just want to separate into these three columns the first name middle name and the last name correct okay so these kind of operations we will be able to perform by using the transform data so in this course we get to learn what are all the transform uh, data yes. stuffs are there yes okay okay so everything yes we are we will be able to see we will cover all these stuff into this transform data because this is the most important point into power bi desktop this is a i would say the one of the most important points if you are not aware from the transform data you are nothing into this uh, power bi concepts i would say okay that includes uh, yes uh, converting the data types as well correct correct converting the oh, data oh. type each and everything each and everything we will see into the practical i will also let first of all i will explain you that why these things are uh, being used and we will also see the practical cases also uh, just to relate is it a light version power bi is a light version of uh, you know the business intelligence uh, no suit ssis something no 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 ss ssis uh, if i say so through the ssis you cannot create the visualization okay yeah, we, but there is an option to uh, do this you uh, know reporting services or uh, analysis yeah. services so that is basically the part of the msbi so in the mm -hmm. msbi there is basically the ssis ssis and ssrs right so, yes. so ssis is basically the complete part of the edl activities extract transformation and loading but mm -hmm. they have not given that much feature which we have into that power bi desktop okay and if you use the ssrs that is sql server reporting services which is basically for the creating the visualization by connecting with the ssas that is S sql server analytical uh, services mm -hmm. that is the mm -hmm. cube concept so yeah. they have not given these kind of a feature so now the most of the companies are replacing the ssrs with the power bi oh okay so in the re in the real scenario basically the the best combination the company has created that if the person is aware from the concept of this you know uh, the ssas that is sql server analytic services and the power bi so that is basically the good concept they have so now because of this one they have given this analysis services that is the ssas you can see sql server analysis services can you see this one yeah, yeah. got it got it yeah so the re basically the power bi desktop is now re uh, basically the ssrs is replaced replaced with the power bi desktop now so it is actually vice versa i was uh, like 
thinking it is a light version of you know that msbi suit okay right. got it thanks okay so uh till here uh, the things are clear to everyone right perfect yes sir okay so we can just wind up the session uh, today itself if no one has any query and tomorrow we will connect at the same time then we'll do okay. thanks anup thank you okay. have a nice day everyone bye thank you anup